Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Our topic continuing today is really predicting the Russian attack on America. Specifically, I'm going to show you where that happens in the scriptures. Today, we're going to be talking about the fall of America as it is found in Revelation 19. I already covered where it was in Revelation 17 and 18 and now 19. It's the really, really important part. And I'm going to encourage you to stay to the end and watch all of this. And yes, I know, Bible prophecy is sometimes complicated. Sometimes it makes your eyes cross, gives you a headache to try to follow it. I'm going to show you in a simple, easy way to understand. And this is actually good news to think that the Russian attack on America is not until about four or so much months before Jesus returns, based upon the scriptures. And it's... Uh, Frankly, a little scary to say that, but I think I've got a good reason, so I'm going to show you. So anyway, follow America today as it is found in Revelation 19. After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia. Now the key word here is this next one, salvation. At this point, Jesus has returned and he has resurrected 144,000 one-year-old Jewish boys. He's, uh, this is Revelation 14.1. I looked and lo, a lamb stood upon the Mount Zion with him 144,000, having his father's name written on the foreheads. That happens on first fruits. I'm going to show you a chart on that in just a second. Don't worry. If you don't understand that, I'll get it. Then about, no, not about, exactly 50 days later, this is when this takes place. This is when we go to the marriage supper of the lamb. These words are the church, when we arrive at the marriage supper of the Lamb on the Feast of Pentecost. Now, I go into this deep in detail so you can really understand it in my book, Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy, and I'm going to explain that here in just a second, too. But for right now, it says, Alleluia. These are the words we say the first time we see Jesus at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Those that are ready, not everybody, those that are ready get to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Blessed and holy are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power to the Lord our God. We just saw Jesus. The reason he says salvation is because we realize we're at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We realize we're saved. Hallelujah, salvation, glory, honor, and power to the Lord our God for true and righteous are his judgments. In other words, we just saw America get attacked by Russia. No, this is not Jesus doing it. I mean, Jesus is doing Russian, but I mean, this is, not, this is not the wrath. This is not Feast of Trumpets. This is about four months before the Feast of Trumpets. This is just prior or on or about associated with the Feast of Pentecost, which is about four months before the Feast of Trumpets. True and righteous are his judgments. The church just saw America get hit by Russia. For he has judged the great whore, the whore that has just been killing Christians for the last probably several years. Massive Christians. For in her I saw the blood of, of saints and martyrs of Jesus. For he has judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication. In other words, the, the earth followed like a pied piper America away from Christ. And avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. So what happened was there was a great purge of Christians. Those that had the mark of the beast began to kill those people. They were commanded to do so by the Antichrist, so says David Phillips in his vision. They were commanded to kill people that did not have the mark of the beast. That's what we're seeing. So we're now at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We say, hallelujah, salvation, glory, honor, and power to the Lord our God, for true and righteous are his, are his judgments before he has judged the great whore. We just saw the Russians attack America. We're now at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're saying, he was right. He was right to take out America. Why? He has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. There was a lot of Christians that America killed just prior to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Not a rapture. Most Christians in America, if you're found, you're dead. Let's go on. <clears throat> and again, they said, that's the second time. Bible says the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. So it's confirming, yes, America just fell. Yes, we are at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And said again, hallelujah. And so, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And why is that the smoke rose up forever and ever? Well, I think it is two things. 
One is nuclear weapons landed all over America, so you got the nuclear fallout, you got radiation forever and ever. And they also are going to be hitting all of the uh, underground wells, crude oil, and probably there's crude oil fires, and God just lets them burn right on into the millennium. It says the smoke grows up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen. In other words, we agree. It was right to take out America. It was right to use the Russians to attack America with nuclear weapons. Amen. Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne and said, Praise our God. What are you doing? Praise our God, all you servants, and either fear him both small and great. Now listen to the next part. This is confirmation. This is not the Feast of Trumpets. This is the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. Marriage Supper of the Lamb takes place on Pentecost. How do you know that? Well, I think it's Exodus 19. It says in the third month. The only feast that takes place in the third month is the Feast of Pentecost. And that's when God spoke audibly down from Mount Sinai. It was there a week ago. From Mount Sinai and saying, I will be your God if you'll be my people. That was the marriage proposal. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude. That's us. As the voice of many waters, as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Omnipotent means now he is now about to be crowned at the marriage supper of the Lamb. He's about to be crowned King of kings and Lord of lords. This is where he changes from being prince of the kings of the earth, where he's crowned and becomes the King of kings and Lord of lords. This is where he changes from being the Lamb of God to become the Lion of the tribe of Judah. That's the reason, just a minute, it's about to say on his vesture and on his thighs a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, because right here is where he is crowned. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor him for the marriage of the Lamb has come. And his wife, that's us, so you've got to be ready, just like the parable says, his wife has made herself ready. Now, I've got a question. Does all of the church get to go is, is all of the church the, the bride of Christ? No. How can you be the bride of Christ if you didn't get to go to the marriage? Uh, that's a good question. Say it again. How can you be the bride of Christ if you didn't get to go to the marriage? So the only ones that are the bride of Christ are the ones that were, see this word right here, I'll, I'll circle it, say it right here, has made herself ready. You go back to the parable, and those that are ready went in. So you've got to be ready has made herself ready. And her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. What's that? That's the marriage supper. That's the, the wedding garment. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Now, I'm, I've got to give you an overview here for you to understand this next part. Again, I understand Bible prophecy complicated. I'm about to make it simple. So from here <clears throat> to here. See right here, okay? From here to here, this is seven years. Remember, the audible voice spoke to me and said, the seven seals play over seven years. The seven trumpets, right here, play over seven months. The seven vials play over seven days. Let me back up and show you again. So the seven seals play over seven years. Doesn't mean it's one each year. Frankly, I think the first several seals open almost at the same time. And Vicky Parnell's right. The first five are already open, but I'm waiting for confirmation on that. Then the trumpets play over seven months. The vials play over seven days. Now, keep that in mind, because what we're about to deal with is this part right here, okay? This is the overview of the, la of the, excuse me, this is the overview of the seven feasts, because the secret door showed me that the word first fruits of Leviticus 23.10 and Revelation 14.4 is a secret door. And with that, you can then put all of the prophecies into the correct chronological order. So here are the, the seven prophecies, Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost, Trumpets, Atonement, and Tabernacles. But today, we're going to be concerned with these right here. So just the last seven months is all we're concerned with right here, from here to here. In other words, from First Fruits, I looked at Revelation 14, 4, I looked and lo, a lamb stood upon the Mount Zion. That's here. In the last seven months, we go from Jesus returning, resurrect 144,000 one-year-old Jewish boys, to all the way to the New Jerusalem coming down. That's the last seven months. Now, 
this is the last four months, and this is what I'm about to talk about, just right here. So when Jesus returns with 144,000 here, he walks around with 144,000 here. We go to the marriage supper of the Lamb here. He's crowned King of kings and Lord of lords. We're given white wedding garments and a horse. We ride back down here on the Feast of Trumpets uh, for Armageddon. Now, I know this is complicated, and I spend several days explaining the book of Revelation. I'd recommend you get this package. You get two big, two foot by three foot, big color, bottom charts, nice charts, hang on the wall. You also get my handwritten book right here, right here. My handwritten, this is where I wrote out the book of Revelation. It's got all my notes in it and everything. You get that handwritten book, got a copy of it. You also get five DVDs of the School of the Watchmen where I teach through the book of Revelation. You get five copies of my book, Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy, valued at $355 for a gift of $200. It is, in my opinion, from the 30 years of Prophecy Club being going, this is probably the, the best offer we have ever had. In terms of if you want to understand the last days, here it is. You, you got to get it. You got to get it. All right, let's go on. So I'm going to be dealing just with these last four months, just from here to here, okay? First of all, here's when the Russians attack America. Let me back up. So when Jesus returns, Revelation 14, 4, the very next time, he didn't return to the Mount of Olives. He returns to Mount Zion. I looked and lo, a lamb stood upon the Mount Zion. Then he resurrects 144,000 one-year-old Jewish boys. Get the book to find out more. He walks around. They follow him whithersoever he goeth. He walks around for four months. Then on Pentecost, then we are resurrected, or if we're alive, and very few Christians would be alive at that time. If we are alive, then we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Jesus is again, he's given many crowns, crowned King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and he's given a vesture dipped in blood and a white horse. He comes forth and serves us. We only get a wedding garment. Four months later, here at Armageddon, we return a white horses with him. In tow, the armies of heaven followed him on white horses, clothed in fine linen, clean and white. And he tried the wine press. Here, I'll, I'll show you the scripture in just a second. So this is where Armageddon takes place. The fall of America takes place, in my opinion, right here, on, just before, on about, or during the marriage supper of the Lamb. Call to the marriage supper of the Lamb right here. Now think about that. That's the good news. If America is destroyed about four months before Jesus returns, that's sort of good news, isn't it? That's, that's, that's kind of good news. I mean, it's better than us being destroyed seven years before Jesus returned. Okay, let's go on. This is when the angel, it, it happens three things. Okay, so we got one, two, and three. So the first thing happens is the angel flies through the midst of heaven with the everlasting gospel to preach to everybody that dwells on the earth. Every ear on the planet hears that angel. Why? Because the judgment's about to arrive. Why? Because the Russians are about to take out America, and there's about to be, most of the, the remaining Christians are all about to be killed and taken to the marriage supper of the Lamb. So first of all, we see the everlasting gospel, that angel fly through the midst of heaven. Then it openly says, Babylon has fallen. So it says, once you hear an angel fly through the midst of heaven, saying, Fear God and, and give glory unto Him. Worship Him made heaven and the earth and the fountains of waters. When we hear and see that angel, and everybody on earth will hear it, if we're still alive, we know, boom, Russia's about to attack America according to look. Like in the right of this stuff, this is what it says. So the everlasting gospel is preached. Everybody hears that. Then Babylon has fallen. Then the next thing that happens is, third angel says, I'm giving you a warning. If anybody worship that beast or receive his mark in his forehead in the hand of the saints shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God that is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and his smoke shall ascend forever and ever and he has no rest day or night who worship the beast or his image or whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Meaning, America just got taken out. The Russians took America out. Now, there's nothing holding back the mark of the beast. There's nothing holding back the Antichrist. There's no restraint to whatever the devil wants to do. And so consequently, there's an angel flying through them. And I think everybody on earth hears the warning. Just like everybody on earth hears this, receive Jesus, stop sinning right now. 
Worship him made heaven and the earth and the fountains of water. That's the everlasting, that's the simplest gospel there is. Then America's taken out. Then the angel flies through the midst of heaven. Now America's been taken out now. Saying, look it, you worship that beast. You take that image, receive his mark, with the name, number of his name. You do one of those four things, and you are going to be tormented with the beast, the false prophet, a thousand years later, Lucifer joins them. They are tossed into the lake that burns with the brimstone. And there is no hope of escape. So what happens is the Russians attack here. It's just before Pentecost. It may be the very even day of Pentecost. At that point, we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Jesus comes forth and he for, for, serves us. That's the reason we say, Hallelujah, salvation, glory, honor, the power of the Lord our God, for true and righteous are his judgments, for he has judged the great whore. Because? Because America was just taken out. That's the order of the events. Let me go, let me finish it. Okay, so everlasting gospel. Babylon has fallen. Third angel. Now, four months later, here's what happens. Then the seventh angel. Okay, this is the very last thing that happens. This is the last day. This is Armageddon. In the evening they are, in the morning they are not, Isaiah 17, 14. Seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple saying, It is done. What is done? The kingdoms of this world had become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever. Then on down it says, Babylon has now came into remembrance before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. See, this is not his wrath. This is his wrath. The wrath of Jesus is the morning star. When that morning star comes down. So there's two different destructions on America, which is why it says is fallen, is fallen. This one is when the Russians attack just before we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Four months later, now it's here. Babylon comes into remembrance to give the fierceness of his wrath. So there's two different destructions. The Russians here and then Jesus here. Got it? Russians here, four months later, Jesus here. The Russians just before Pentecost, just before marriage, supper of the Lamb. This is the last four months before Jesus returned, and then Jesus here. On this particular chart, it's up here about, about right here. Uh, Babylon's fallen here, and then out here is when Jesus returns. Way out here off the chart here, you can't see this. Let's talk about Joseph Kitchen. I actually cooked this loaf of bread you're seeing here. It takes me about 10 minutes to put the ingredients together, put it into a bread machine, push a button, two hours, 20 minutes later, I get a loaf of bread out like that. Now, if you cut that loaf of bread that weighs about three pounds, the loaves you get in the store have most of the good stuff removed. The loaves you get in the store are about a pound. That's three pounds because it's got the good stuff still in it. Cut that into 14 slices. And if I eat a slice in the morning and the afternoon, I'm satisfied. So on that basis, one loaf can sustain, and it says everything we want, can sustain a person, one person for a week. Based upon that, it'll get you excellent nutrition. It tastes good, long storage life, 10 minutes to combine the ingredients, two hours, 20 minutes to make it. Other wheat that you order arrives in paper bags, which means bugs, rice, humidity can get a hold of it and ruin it. But at Joseph Kitchen, they send it out in 100 mil thick buckets. Gives you long shelf life. It's stackable. There's some nitrogen infuses that hopefully gives it a lot much longer shelf life, kills bugs and things like that. Easily resealable. Keep in a climate controlled area. And they have it in stock. This is a picture, an actual picture of part of the warehouse. Here's another picture of the, these. Actually, each one of those boxes holds 2,500 pounds of wheat, and I think they've got 54 of those boxes, a bunch of them. So Joseph's Kitchen can ship it to you right now. You go to most of these places, they say out of stock. So here's what you want to do. Everybody needs to get a machine package. These are the things that you need to grind the wheat berries, put them into a grinder. 30 seconds later, you have flour. You put that into the bread machine along with six other ingredients, push a button two hours, 20 minutes later, you have a nice hot loaf of whole wheat bread. Then you have to decide how much food you want. You want food two people one year, four people one year, six people one year. And if you want to make certain you have it when the electricity goes down, you can also get yourself a solar generator all at josephskitchen.com. josephskitchen.com.
And he saith unto me, Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Now, here's Jesus returning on the white horse. This is Armageddon. This is when all the armies, Ezekiel 38 and 39, have come down to attack Israel. This is when the, the Euphrates River has been dried up to allow all of the kings of the east to come over to attack. Basically, the whole world is coming down trying to destroy Israel. And I saw heaven open. So this is John. He's seeing heaven open. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him is called Faithful and True. That would be Jesus. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. He's making war. This is Armageddon. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns. Why? Because he just came from the marriage supper of the Lamb four months ago. And he had a name written, which no man knew but he himself. He was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. That would be Jesus. And the armies which are in heaven, that's us. That's the angels that are now there. And also, we are coming from the marriage supper of the Lamb. In heaven followed him by white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth the sharp sword, that's the morning star, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress and the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. So the wrath, a lot of people say, well, we're not appointed to wrath, but type of saying, salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yep, I agree. Question is, what's wrath? Here's wrath. Wrath is the morning star. The wrath arrives on the Feast of Trumpets, the day of Armageddon. That's the wrath. We're not appointed to that. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh, thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's now riding the white horse, a vesture dipped in his own blood from 2,000 years before. He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, what does he do? I saw an angel fly, standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come, gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Why? Because Jesus is about to kill, along with the two angels, is about to kill them all. And all of that flesh has to be consumed to cleanse the land. Gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and captains, and the flesh of mighty men and horses, and of them that sat on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, that's the Antichrist. And the kings of the earth and their armies gathered to make war against him that sat on the horse, that would be Jesus, and against his army. Now, I do not believe the army does any fighting. The only people that does any fighting is Jesus. He has the morning star, which is like a lightsaber, and two angels that have sharp sickles. They slash the grapes, which is why the blood rises to the horse bridle. And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet, which wrought miracles before them, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that had worshipped his image. These both were cast alive. Why are they cast alive? Because their bodies are destroyed, but their soul is not. They are tossed into the lake burning with brimstone for all eternity, where they are tormented day and night. Only four groups of people there. The beast, false prophet, those that take the mark, and then a thousand years later, Lucifer joins them. These were both cast alive in the lake, burning with brimstone, and the remnant, in other words, the rest of the people, rest of the people gathered around to attack Israel, the remnant, were well, they're slain with a sword of him that sat on the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, that's the morning star, and the fowls were filled with her flesh. And I am out of time. Okay, Terry Saka, CornerstoneAssetMetals.com. Why should people be calling Cornerstone today? I was actually watching an interview with a very powerful psychoanalyst and he brought up Dimitri Dudeman and I was very impressed. I was like, Dimitri Dudeman, that's Stan's, one of Stan's main guy in prophecy. He was talking about cycles of market crashes and, and financial uh, realignments. In the next 45 days, we are looking at such a severe possibility of a 40 to 50% market correction by design and that will lead to an extraordinary opportunity to take advantage of gold and silver while it's at these low prices. All right. So in your opinion, is it better that they get gold or silver? Silver is very undervalued. Uh, the banks have to get out of the short position. So I think they're going to take it to this low as it is now. And that would be your best opportunity for return on investment. 
and definitely the easiest to unload when the time comes. Okay, so how does it work? They go to cornerstoneassetmetals.com and essentially, eventually, they're going to make a phone call and they're going to set up an account and then the money trades hands. How does that work? Yes, yeah, so they either register on our website or they give us a call. We'll walk them through their options. Once we have cleared uh, monies into the account, we can actually get the, the product in line for shipment depending on what you order. It could take anywhere from seven days to you know, six weeks depending on what it is. Uh, but once you actually lock in that order, it is owned and it will eventually be there. Now, what if they want to buy a whole bunch of it, but they don't have a place that they really want to store it? Can you store it for them? Oh, that's a big one. We have a lot of clients that they go upwards to seven figures. And it's obviously better to have, you know, 40,000 ounces in a private depository than it is at home. And so we find a lot of people do store in a private depository d depository. It's independent, so it's not related to any part of the banking system. Uh, but the important part is when it's there, you can buy and sell it very easy. And because Cornerstone also has an affiliated account at that depository, we can literally transfer the assets right into our account and wire funds to you fairly quick. Okay, so it's not actually physically held in Switzerland, is it? I would never be holding anything in Switzerland. Oh. I think that's the <laughs> epicenter of Satanism, right? <laughs> Okay, so it's Terry Saka at cornerstoneassetmetals.com, cornerstoneassetmetals.com. Go there, check it out today. When a nuclear device is detonated, the dust, the dust settles on everything. You breathe it, absorb it, you cannot stop it. And when you breathe it or absorb it, it floods your thyroid with bad iodine, killing your thyroid and killing you. But there is a solution. I just went out to my freezer. This is mine. I keep it out there. I've had it for several years. And it says, uh, this is potassium iodide. As a matter of fact, I keep it in the freezer. And I keep them in a Ziploc bag, just like this. This is my personal supply we keep in the freezer. So there you go. Now, it's 30 bucks a bottle. If you order five bottles, you get an extra bottle free. You need one bottle per exposure per person, um, and it has the instructions on it. But anyway, I would suggest you go to prophecyclub.com. And let me, do, let me just tell you, we've only got 100 bottles. Now, we've already made plans to get another 1,000 bottles in. Ben's this is coming up. Right now, we only have 100. So my suggestion is you get over to prophecyclub.com and you get your bottles ordered real quick. You might even be a part of the 100 that we have. And if not, then another week or so after that, we will get some more bottles, get it out to you. 30 bucks a bottle, order five and get a sixth one free. Here it is, potassium iodide. Is your life worth 30 bucks? I mean, you may as well have it. I mean, spend 30 bucks. So you get a suitcase nuke in the area or something like that? Not worried.